Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, He scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, We are Penn State! Welcome to the Steel Flyer Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. It's a lovely day in the neighborhood, and say hello to your host, Steel Flyers. Thank you, that is a lovely and delightful co-host, Ronies. That's right, folks, we're back, and we're ready to roll with a great show, so let's get right into it. The 2021 NFL Draft is in the rearview mirror, and the regular season schedule has been released, and boy, the Sealers have a tough slate of games. With the flyer season coming to an end without making the playoffs this year, and the disappointments are beginning to mount. The NHL playoffs are set to begin this weekend, and thus begins the second season march to Lord Stanley. We are so happy to be back after a little break, and there is so much to get into. We'd also like to... A huge thank you to our sponsor, www.cccresorts.com. Well, folks, I'll tell you what. We had to take a little break here to do some things. And boy, oh boy, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, yeah. The playoffs are getting the, getting ready to start here for the NHL. Without the Flyers. Without the Flyers, of course. And, you know, that's like every other year without the Flyers. So um, it's kind of getting to be, uh, you know, getting used to that. Yeah, so, uh, especially with the uh, NHL playoffs set to begin here uh, this coming Saturday with uh, one of the first games being Boston versus Washington uh, in the first round, that's going to kick off here at 7 o'clock, puck drop 7 p.m. or whatever. So, well, looking forward to the playoffs this year, uh, I have to say I'm, I'm really excited about the playoffs, but I'm very disappointed in the fact that the Flyers are not there. Yeah, even if they had made it at the way they were playing, they wouldn't have made it far into the Yeah, I don't think race. they would have made it out of the first round either. I, even if they would have finished in fourth place, that means they would have been playing against Pittsburgh. And that didn't go well this year! Um, no. Well, it actually it did. That was actually one of the teams that we did well against. Yeah. But, but... We but wouldn't have made it far. Not in a seven-game series. I don't... I, every other night, I just don't... I, I can't see Philadelphia putting that back-to-back wins together because they weren't able to do it all year. Right. You know, I mean, I think their their biggest streak was, you know, a couple of games. Right. You know, four or five games was their biggest streak. And that so. was probably before COVID break, so. It, I believe it was. Right before the COVID break is when they were winning a couple of games there in a row there. So, yeah. Uh, tough season for the Flyers, but um, uh, there's a few things that I need to say here about this team. Yeah, I've heard them all already. Yeah, well. <laughs> Let's start off by saying this. Um, I listened to the press conference with uh, Chuck Fletcher and Elon Vigneault the other day, and I have to say I'm 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 left scratching my head. Um, it seems like there's no accountability for this team at all whatsoever for management and or coaching, and that to me is redonkulous. The fact that the Flyers finished in thirtieth place in scoring, their their power play was. Um, 20th. The I thought they were last place in power play. Power play was 20th and PK was 30th. Oh, okay. Okay. Our, our goals against average was atrocious! And our differential was off the freaking bloody charts. Okay? So how is it that no coaching changes are being made? How is it that management is still left to be in place? When all I heard during the press conferences was, oh, well, it was because of this, and it was because we couldn't do that, and it was because these guys couldn't do this, and these guys couldn't do this, and this didn't happen, and this didn't happen, and this didn't happen. And then you know what it sounded like? Excuses? It sounded like a 10-year-old standing there going, well, why did you steal the candy? Well, I didn't steal the candy. Okay, well, all right, I stole the candy, but, but I didn't steal a lot of candy. Okay, you still stole the candy, you, you, you know what it sounds like to me is somebody who's not doing their job and making up excuses. The, we need a regular season and we need regular practice times. Well, all the other teams in the league had the exact same problems. All A lot of the teams had COVID issues. Worse than the Flyers. And they still managed to win games back to back. Mm-hmm. Colorado was one of the teams that had a really bad outbreak. 
Okay, they look where they're finishing. Right. Okay, Carolina had a pretty bad outbreak as well too. Look where they're finishing. Right. Okay, the fact that of all the teams that I've heard that have not made the playoffs, this is the only time I've heard an excuse that said it was because of COVID. Right. Or because they weren't able to do this or because they were um I'm sorry, but you know there's <laughs> what? And that comes down to you not doing your job because if yes, there, there was an unusual season, it was a different schedule, it was very tight, it was very quick. But your job as the coach or the leader of the team is to help the team manage that difficulty. I mean, I can't be the only one that sees. We can't be the only ones that see this. I mean, I listened to the LMB podcast show the other day, which, by the way, y'all need to check that out and follow them and, and, and subscribe to them for sure. You can find them out on Spotify. They're from flowersnittygritty.com. But uh, Isaiah was was just speaking the truth and he said it exactly the same way i just said it it sounded like a, a rolling list of excuses mm -hmm. you know and every single team was facing the same excuses yet this year our young players regressed right okay and our veterans didn't step up right okay and so if you don't have leadership from the top then you're not sending the right message to the leadership on the ice and then the leadership on the ice is not trickling down to those young players so that those young players take the next step so they progress. You right. know what I mean? The fact that no heads are rolling has me utterly terrified about the next five years with the Flyers. Because what they do in the draft and this offseason is going to affect this team for the next five years. Right. It doesn't matter if Chuck Fletcher and A.V. get fired halfway through the season. Whatever happens this offseason is going to affect this team for the next five years, in my opinion. Because this year's draft is, there's so many question marks because a lot of these players were not able to be seen and scouted. Right, because they weren't playing or there was COVID issues or whatever the reason. Whatever. So you have to do your due diligence to get a hold of watching these players and everything else. Okay? So that means that more than likely there's going to be some really good steals probably in the later rounds because these players have not been scouted very well. So, I mean, that's how, that's gonna, that, that, that's how that whole thing's going to work. But I'm, I'm very... I don't have any warm and fuzzies about the Flyers moving forward with the current administration. They did not make me feel like I wanted to be, you know, all excited about what's going to happen in the off season and what's going to happen during the during you know the draft and everything else like that. And and this team is carrying these multiple ugly contracts of players that shouldn't even be on this team. Right, they you, should go. That and and you know and. Uh, I'm going to also have to agree with my buddy Lance. We'll be doing our show on Hockey Writer Zinc. We'll be doing that a little later. But he wrote an article today firing the first salvo. And the first salvo is the whole Nolan Patrick thing. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, guys, um, but I really think it's time for Nolan to move on. Yeah, he kind of didn't live up to expectations. He was given a full year to where he played pert near every game. Right. Okay. And in the first five games, he looked great. Right? Scoring, playing up in the game, you know, playing up, looking good. Right? After that, nothing. I mean, nothing. He went 20 odd games without a goal, you know, and without even a point. Right. And then he had younger players push him off the center spot in the third line. Right. You know what I mean? And so the, the expectations were him to make an improvement. And all I heard from Vino was that he played a full season. Well, great. That's awesome. We're glad. And we're glad. We, I mean, we don't have anything against him, and we're glad that he's healthy. But if he's not performing, then... Time to move on. Okay. There's and a lot of players that are not performing up to their potential on that team. And it's time to move on from and the expansion draft is coming this year as well, too. And a lot of GMs were burned, per se, during the last one because they weren't necessarily prepared with the rules of what the expansion draft was. And a lot of really, really good players were left exposed. 
that's not going to happen this year for the expansion draft for Seattle. A lot, a lot of teams now are buckling down and are, are finding ways to protect players and things of that nature. But quite frankly, I don't think... And then that's the other sad thing, too, about Nolan Patrick. With him not showing out very well this year, he doesn't have a very good trade value. I mean, his, his youth is really the only thing. Right. And the fact that he was second overall draft in the in the first round. Do you want to hear my prediction? Go. He's going to be um, picked for the expansion draft, go to Seattle. And they'll win a cup. And then they'll win a cup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he won't be picked for the expansion draft, probably. Well, he might. I don't know. Or he'll go to whatever team... Right. That we trade him to, and they'll win the cup, and then he'll get his name on again. Yep, yeah, that's how it always works out for the because Flyers. Because the Flyers sometimes are just the... Um, farm team? Farm team for the <laughs> NHL, yeah. Or farm team for, for, for teams to pluck players from to go win the cup for. Right. You know, because this is why I like about what Isaiah said. He said that we have a... And he was on the show with your reef, and they did... I mean, the whole Flyers Nitty Gritty show with Chef, and, and then... Of the OMB podcast show, and they all kind of basically said the same thing that where the Flyers just have a collection of talent, but there's but, no team there. I was going to say there's no team, right? And there isn't even really. I don't think there's. I don't think there's leadership in the room from the coaching standpoint on down. Yeah, I I look at Couturier as a leader, and and him being one of the examples of a leader, and then I see Voracek being one of the leaders, but yet. His attitude maybe is not necessarily egging the young guys on. I mean, you're supposed to lead by example. And if you're taking shifts off and if you're taking nights off, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're not giving it 110% every night. Leadership reflects. Right. You know? And so the younger guys look up and see, oh, well, the $8 million guy's not hustling every night, and he's not giving it 110% every night, and he's making $8.25 million a year. Yeah. Well, I don't have to do that, and I could probably make money. Right. I mean, let's, I'm just uh, saying. Let's add some positive. Yeah, some positive. What's some positives we can take from this season? I like... Joe Farabee. I wow, think he 20 was goals. A really good, uh, a shining spot in our yeah. season. Exactly. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I liked his uh, game coming on. Moran yeah. coming up and playing really, really well when he was given the opportunity to play. Right. Um, this is why I have some conflicts with coaching here with, with what's going on with some of the players and why they did play or why they didn't play. I'm very happy to see Moran get up and play. Um, that kid has faced two ACLs in the last two years, and to see him come up and play the way he's been able to play, amazing. Yeah. Wade Allison. Yeah. Folks, I'm here to tell you, this cat is the real deal. He's going to have an off season where he needs to do what Joel Farabee did and, and hit the weight room. Put on some... 15 or so pounds and bulk up, mm. right? So that he can handle them checks, okay? And not get pushed off the puck like, like you know, before. So... That's... Going back to the negative of the Flyers, that's one thing we were really missing is a physical game. Exactly. Exactly. We had too many... Too many players taking shots at our stars like Couturier and TK and Giroux, and there was no answer to it. There, there were guys that were just skating away. There was nothing. And then when Moran came in, suddenly there was some accountability out there. Right. You know? Uh, okay. Well, hey. But he's one of those types of players that could potentially bring uh, that physicality back to what the Flyers needed. Um, you know what I mean? So. I think that goes, still goes back to the coaching of expectations exactly. of, exactly. hey, you know what? If somebody takes out your goalie, maybe you guys should maybe defend him. But, you know, um, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm old-fashioned. No, 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 no. I've also been very, very impressed with Shane Gostaspare this year. Yeah. Um, every time he was knocked down, he got up swinging. Right. You know what I mean? And he even said that in his in his exit interview, you know. Um, he said about how it's, it's, it's every time he... Um, was down and he came back to answer the bell better. You yeah. know what I mean. So that was what he said in his, you know, um, exit interview. And uh, so very impressed with what Shane Gossespierre did. I've I, I've been a fan of his ever since he's come to the Flyers. But when you're dealing with the injuries that he's had, right? 
and then trying to come back from that. And then he really got hit with COVID this year, too. Right. Okay, so that really affected him, and he missed quite a bit of time from COVID, too. But all in all, though, I thought Shane Gossesbear, I mean, he was fourth in the league with nine power play points or, or you know what I mean, for defensemen. So, uh, all right, I'm going to... Uh, but, yeah, I'd I'm, I'm like to see uh, Shane Gossesbear in there, too. You know what I mean? So, um, I think we've probably seen the, the end of Brian Elliott um, in a Flyers uniform. So, congratulations, Appreciato. And we'll see you on the flip side. I don't know if he continue, wants to continue to play or not. I don't know, but... Um, well, we're going to need a goalie because Carter Hart, I don't know, for some reason, just fell apart this year. I don't know if it was a lack of practice or whatever. But um, he did not live up to expectations. This, this was year. one of the things that I'm going to actually agree with AV in his assessment of Carter Hart. This was the first time that Carter Hart has faced adversity. But I'm going to disagree with with Vino on the next part of what I'm going to say. Yes, this was the first year that Carter Hart has faced adversity. In his entire career, he has won at every level. Right. All the way. Championships, gold medals, whatever. Every level he's played, he's excelled and won at. This was the first year where he had some uh, losses, where he wasn't playing so well, things weren't coming to him as easy, whatever, whatever. And I don't feel that he was given the right situation by the coaching staff to either take the time off to go practice and play down at the AHL level for a couple of games or whatever. Right, keep playing, but just... Practice, okay, because the kid clearly needed some practice, okay? And so I think those were some of the things that they could have done this year to help him, um, but those things weren't done. Right. Okay, so... How about um, that? We just spent the first 16 minutes talking about the Flyers. Wait, I have one more thing, one more positive. Okay, Ooh, cool. Go, Cam go, go. York. Ooh, Cam York. Made his debut as well, too. And, you know, that's the other thing that I want to really touch on here real quick is that um, a lot of our uh, draft picks from the last two years have been um, basically kind of uh, shoved into the AHL Phantoms yeah, um, because their junior teams weren't playing. Okay, the Q didn't play and some of the other, and you know, um, uh, and then some of the other players went to college and played in college, like Cam York and something mm-hmm. like that. But not everybody's league. And Zade Wisdom um, showed out real well with the Phantoms. Uh, and some of the other younger players, Tyson Forrester, showed out real well uh, with the Phantoms uh, as well, too. So looking forward to a lot of the guys coming up to the to the, to the Flyers. Um, I like The other thing I like about Cam York is he does have that leadership quality. He does. And he has the personality I think the team needs is like a cheerleader. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, hey, guys, let's do it. Let, that's yeah. the impression I get. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I get. He was selected as captain of the World Junior uh, United States team that won the gold medal. Um, I think he was an uh, associate captain on the Michigan Wolverines, which is where he played mm-hmm. um, college hockey. So, yeah, I, f- I foresee that, too. So, kudos to that, man. Love seeing Cam York coming in and playing. And then he has a good game, too, and like seeing that. So, Greetings, this is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and we have two very special guests. We are delighted to be joined by Tracy Musser and Nicole Howard from the Canine Country Club Resorts. Tracy and Nicole are both managers for CCC Resorts and work at the Windsor or at the club, one of two locations both in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Congratulations on your 30th year anniversary of being in business. Let me start off by saying this. Steel Flyer stands behind this company 100%. Taking taking care of Steel Flyer's furry friend for the last two years now, and they are a one-stop shop for everything your furry friend needs. In fact, let's find out what our friends at CCC Resorts offer. Nicole, how are you today? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. What are some of the great boarding services that you guys offer, and what do we have to do in order to get our furry friends taken care of when we are unable to travel with them? Well, we like to bring everybody in for a tour first. That way they can see the behind the scenes. They can see where they stay. They can see where they play. And then we explain all of the fun things that we can add on to their reservation, whether it be one of our packages, either a nature walk, a ball time, or even a cuddle time. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Um, Boy, it sure sounds like a resort to me. So how are you today, Tracy? I'm doing well. Thank you. Tracy, tell me, is it true that you guys have both an indoor and an outdoor pool at the Windsor location? It is true. We've got one of each, so we're able to offer year-round swimming. The indoor pool is a great option for dogs who are swimming for therapy or rehab. It's got that sloped entry so they can wade into the water. Our outdoor pool is a little bit larger, and it's uh, four four foot deep the whole way across. Uh, Both of them are saltwater pools, so it's really easy on the dog's skin and coat. 
Wow, that's very awesome. So then during the summer months, you have a much deeper pool outside and then a sloped entry shallow pool indoors for the dogs. Tracy, tell the folks how we can get some pool time. Well, the first thing everyone does is come for an intro swim. Uh, we use that time to make sure the dog is comfortable in the water. We make sure they know how to get out of the pool safely. And we go over all the pool rules and etiquette with the clients as well. After that, they're able to schedule private appointments where they have the pool to themselves or they can invite friends and have a whole group swim going on. So after a dip in the pool, then it would have to be off to the groomers, right? I mean, our furry friends cannot go out looking their best. Nicole, what are some of the great services your top-notch groomers provide? Our groomers, uh, they specialize in full service grooms. We can do the basics, whether it be just a bath and a brush out or a blowout, uh, or for the extra pampered pooches, we can do nail dremels, we can do uh, deodorizing soaks and also facials. <laughs> wow, man, that sounds like a resort if you ask me. <laughs> Tracy, I know one of the main programs uh, here at CCC Resorts is the WAGS program. The Steel Flyers dog is enrolled in this program. So why don't you tell the folks what is involved in this and how they can get enrolled? Yeah, the WAGS program is our primary daycare option at the Windsor. Uh, it's designed to be a structured program for people who are looking for a set routine for their dog. They all come on the same days each week, which allows uh, them to have set friends and we know exactly what's going on with each group. So we do a little bit more activities and we build more into their, their daily routine there. But we've got other daycare options as well for the people looking for a little less commitment. We do an hourly care where you can drop them off and just pay by the hour. We also do a day stay option which is great for the dogs that prefer human friends instead of making friends with other dogs. And then we have a traditional daycare option as well if you're looking for the occasional outing for your dog. Wow. There you have it. A full service groomer, a daycare program, and an indoor and outdoor pool. What more could you ask for? Sure seems like CCC Resorts has everything covered. Remember, DOG, depend on God. All right. Well, we're going to move to our next favorite. Um, and that's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. And the Pittsburgh Steelers had a really interesting draft this year. <laughs> um, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Interesting. Yeah, all right. I, I like it. Um, if you haven't checked it out, I'm going to do a little plug here for Pittsburgh Dad and see his um, his reaction to the draft this year because it is insanely funny it is really funny um I also, especially the 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 gabe's mention that that killed me yeah that was pretty good too yeah <laughs> oh and the and the uh, the end of the the swimming the swimming yeah we never had swimming but anyway so um also check us out on youtube i did a um a breakdown of each of the uh draft picks um for the pittsburgh steelers it's a two-part show um because I, I covered the first three rounds uh, in that, and then also check out the um, the show I did with Five Star Matchup uh, about the draft. Yeah, too. that we, was a we, really good one. Yeah, we talked about the draft and that too, and and he basically called it. Um, he he thought that Najee would go, and 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 actually I called the next one, which was Fairmouth, mm -hmm. right? So so okay, but but the Pittsburgh Steelers need offensive line help in a running game. So the first thing you think of is a running back. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, what, was was that not dripping enough with sarcasm? <laughs> I think Najee Harris is a good player. I think he'll add to the team. Agreed. But we could have maybe used some other positions filled better, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so... <sighs> <sighs> okay, I mean, Najee Harris, the best running back on the board. Okay, great. Um, I thought Pittsburgh could have probably have gone for an offensive lineman in the first round, thinking that it would be... Uh, look, I understand that a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of availability of offensive linemen, especially in the later rounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, that that whole fact that they... they <laughs> well, well... You know, he so wasn't let's picked talk, until the third round. Let's talk about Faramuth. All right. Um, man, uh, after Vance McDonald retired, that left a huge gaping hole in the Pittsburgh's um, tight end room because they usually go with two tight end sets for the most part, um, especially if they're um, doing anything in the run game. Okay. So um, I, I don't understand why why that's happening. I don't either. You know, why? 
Why are you getting a running back when you need offensive line help? You had Pouncey retire. Uh, you, you had... You have guys that don't have a lot of experience on the line right now with Chucks and Dotson. Mm-hmm. Dotson Dotson was a rookie last year. Played really great. But he's still very young. He, this is only his second year. Yeah. Right? Okay, we, we re-signed Feeler, but okay, great. And we still have a really young line that hasn't played much. Right. And the Castro is really the only player that's on there that's been that has any kind of real serious experience and he hasn't been able to be on the field very much in the last two years he was a lot of injuries right yes exactly so i mean i i I don't know what well at least this year we're going in without oh sorry about that sorry about that folks a little interruption there so didn't mean for that to happen Without our um, offensive coordinator. Ah, well, I'm, I'm just glad that offensive coordinator is gone, and we'll see how uh, all those things go and see what happens with all that. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I approve of Canada. I, I think he's going to be a all- good offensive coordinator. But uh, you're a Pittsburgh Steelers team. You want to have that identity of running, then run the ball. Right. If if you don't want to have that identity of running, then pass the ball fifty times a game. Ben can't do that. Right. So um, there, there you have it. That's where we go back to. We need an offensive line that can protect for a running game. Like I said, uh, you know, it's like I know this team or something, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, check out some uh, cool stuff we got coming out here for the Steelers uh, as as the season comes along and things progress. We'll, we'll be putting out some more things, it'll especially be, with five star matchup. It'll be interesting to see, hopefully, a season without COVID interruption. Well, from what I understand, um, the Pennsylvania laws are going to um, facilitate um, opening of outdoor and indoor facilities to a fifty percent capacity uh in the um indoor and 75 percent capacity in the outdoor this coming weekend and then i believe the memorial day weekend is when all of the restrictions are to be lifted including the mask mandates no not the mask or not the mask mandate i'm sorry but uh, uh um but um limiting the capacities of the season of the uh stadiums will be lifted right all the um the mask is when 70% of the state is vaccinated. Okay. Health and they're at like 40% right now. Yeah. So, okay. So whenever that happens, great. But at least um, for the upcoming um, baseball season, they'll be able to ha- start having full capacity at uh, the baseball season uh, stadiums um, in Pennsylvania. And then by the time uh, it appears that, uh, you know, um, fall sports comes rolling around again uh, in the state of Pennsylvania that uh, it will be at full capacity mm-hmm. uh, to allow for fans in the stands, um, not just at Beaver Stadium, but also um, at the link and then at Heinz Field um, and then, you know, obviously Temple and all the other places. Right. And, you know, so, but looking forward to, to that because that has really um, put a damper on the AHL to where they were not because that's where they get all their money they don't have the tv contracts that nhl does right and the nhl oh speaking of that speaking of tv contracts it's going to be an interesting change next year well we'll get into that in a minute you're jumping the horse here a little bit but sorry about that no no no, that's okay we'll get into that here in just a minute um but there's definitely some things here that we want to talk about as far as that's concerned um so yeah for sure um i really think that the Steelers need to do the right things here. And and I, I, I just hope that the guys that they drafted are going to be able to contribute enough to this team to where Pittsburgh can be where pretty much close to where they were last year. Now, as far as that's concerned, um, the schedule was released yeah. the other day. And, folks, I'm here to tell you... Um, It just doesn't ever get to have an easy schedule for Pittsburgh. I think perhaps last year's schedule. I mean, we had a pretty good schedule last year. Perhaps last year's. It turned out that way. 
it's really hard sometimes when you look at the schedule and base it on the teams playing from the last year. Right. They may not, you might have a team that tanks or you have a team that's, you know, a surprise, you know, black or, right. you know. So, well, uh, um, when, like you a, play, when you play, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yeah, you're playing eight teams that all made the playoffs last year? Yeah. <laughs> Open up against the Bills, uh, then uh, at home for the Raiders and the Bengals, um, and then at the Packers, which that should be interesting. Well, it would be interesting whether Aaron Rodgers is on that team at that point. If he is on the team at I that point. I said if. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, then uh, uh, the Steelers actually have a mid-season bye. We'll see if we get it this year. Yeah, fingers crossed that they get it this year because it didn't happen last year, which was one of the things that I think contributed to the issues that was going on. It, you can only – I mean, it's only a one game that you're missing out, but I think it's a, it's a mental thing. You need that break just to stop and say – Well, yeah, because that break, that bye week, most of the guys you know, go home. Yeah. You know, and, and their home is usually not in Pittsburgh. Right. You know what I mean? They go back to family and, and, you know, hang out with family and wives and, you know, kids and all that other stuff that whole week. You know yeah. what I mean? They didn't get that this year. No. You know what I mean? So uh, that that's a very important thing. Um, let's see. There are, what would we count here? Five prime time games. So there's two Monday night games. Uh, one against the Bears on the 8th of November. And then there's the other Monday night game, which is against the Browns. That's January 3rd. Okay. Um, both of those games are at home, I believe. Did we finish the season in Baltimore? Yeah, both of our Monday night games are at home uh, this year. Now, we also have two Sunday night games. And both of those Sunday night games, one against the Vikings at Vikings, the other one uh, against the Chargers at the Chargers, and then there's also another Sunday, uh, another Sunday night game, um, home against the Seahawks. Right. Okay. And that's on October 17th. There is um, one Thursday night game against the Vikings. Right. Okay. Um, at the Vikings. I'm sorry. I'm mistaken that I thought that was a Monday night game, but it's not. Um, December 9th is the Thursday night Fox Amazon, whatever prime game that is, Thursday night game. That's against the Vikings, but it's at the Vikings. So total of one, two, three, four, five primetime games right. for the Steelers this year, which is pert near about average. Right. You I know, mean, it, it, you know, a good a good portion of the Steelers schedule is primetime. Um, there's some actual four o'clock games uh, this year, too, which is really nice. The October 3rd game against the Packers is a 4 o'clock game. Uh, and then uh, one of the uh, Ravens games is a 4 o'clock game. Wow, we'll actually make sure that one's on TV. Well, I, I, I yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we no. have an issue in this area that we are closer to Baltimore than Philadelphia for some... Or no, than Pittsburgh. Than Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Right, so the CBS affiliate says, well, geographically, because you're closer to Baltimore, uh, you get to watch the Ravens. We're not exactly happy about that. Wait a minute. I'm in Pennsylvania. Why can't I watch the Steelers? Oh, my God. No. Anyway. So, yeah, the the, the team finishes up against the Ravens at the Ravens. That's a 1 o'clock game. Um, by the way, the game after Christmas is a 4 o'clock game at the Chiefs. Yay. Uh, Merry, yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy Boxing Day. Yes, happy Boxing Day. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Broncos, Seahawks, Packers, uh, Bears, Lions. Um, those are going to be some interesting games. Both of those are at home. Chargers, um, Vikings, Titans, and Chiefs. So those are the um, out of conference game or out of uh, division games that the yeah. Steelers have. I mean, so. it's a, I mean, it's a tough schedule, but I think it might be doable. Well, the Browns made the playoffs last year. The Seahawks made the playoffs last year. Broncos made the playoffs. Uh uh-uh. uh. Bills. Made the playoffs. Ravens. Chiefs. Chiefs. Titans. Yeah. So, so, so that's that's a lot of teams that made the playoffs last year. That doesn't necessarily mean they'll be good this year. 
True, but... You know what I wish for the draft? And I know it probably wasn't possible, but we really need a quarterback. Because Ben is... The talk, clock is ticking with Ben. See, I, I thought that what we should have done was packaged up our first round draft pick or 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 our other round draft picks to try to move up to try and get a quarterback. Because this year was a, a bevy of quarterbacks. Yeah, that, there was a huge like selection of quarterbacks available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Because we'll, we'll, we'll our see. future quarterback is not on the team right now. No, he ain't. Because I'm here to tell you, folks, Dodson and 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 uh, Mason, they ain't it. And uh, Dwayne Haskins, or the, the 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 guy that we picked up from uh, from the Washington team, um, he wasn't really he wasn't that good in Washington, and I don't think he's going to be that good in Pittsburgh either. We'll see. Um, quite frankly, um, when the guy has an issue showing up for meetings, um, that that's a problem. Right. Okay. So if you were let go from another team doesn't bode well for your new right. team so i hope that he's able to you know snap in and you know i would like to see him be successful you know but i'm not really counting on it. right you know what i mean so that's kind of how i look at that okay so that was the steelers yay right and otas are going to be coming up here real soon and i'm going to be looking at some of those um and then i guess training camp was slated to be uh, the end of July, and it is supposed to be at Latrobe. They've come out and announced that training camps will be allowed to be traveled to. Okay. Okay. So, because last year training camps had to be held at home stadiums, right? Um, so this year they will be able they will be able to go to Latrobe where they normally have right um, their um, training camp, and then Pittsburgh is going to be playing in the Hall of Fame game. Right. As their first preseason game, which is that first weekend in August. So we will actually be having whistles blown and flags thrown and footballs hiked uh, on that day. And that day, we're going to actually have a very, very special coverage, hopefully, for you guys on that day. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but <laughs> hopefully we'll have some special coverage that day. Um, so, yeah. All right, well, the playoffs. Yeah. The NHL playoffs are happening without the Flyers. I know, it's a bummer. But you, you got to give it up to the second season, uh, March, to, to Lord Stanley. This is the most exciting time in sports, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. um, even though my team's not in it, um, I'm still very excited about the playoffs. I'm still very excited to see who wins the Stanley Cup. Um, because that, to me, is one of the hardest trophies in, in all of sports to win. Right. Is that one. Um, and it's very difficult to try to win multiple series of seven games to hoist that cup. It's very You're long. looking at another two more months of hockey here. Very intense hockey. Exactly. And it's very intense hockey. And there's no... Um, Three on three for five minutes. There's no shootouts. It's play till you win. All right. We almost lost the record last year because of that. Almost. They were like two minutes and 38 seconds <laughs> shy or something, you know, uh, with the uh, the Blue Jackets in Tampa Bay playing last year with a five overtime game, uh, matching the Flyers five overtime game against the Penguins in 2000. So, yeah, that, that was interesting, though, that, that for sure. Um, one other quick little thing I want to talk about here real quick. Um, we're three races into the uh, to the F1 season. Right. Um, we've had Verstappen win one and Hamilton win two. Okay. And, and uh, I have to say that although Ferrari looks a little further up the mid-pack. <laughs> They're just not the former glory of Ferrari. Nope. Now Red Bull is there along with Mercedes, and now McLaren has been jumping in to that spot. So it's a fight between McLaren and Ferrari for that third best team. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so when you're finishing fifth and sixth on the grid, you're qualifying fifth and sixth, you, you got the soft tires, the, the lowest amount of fuel, and the teams ahead of you are blowing your doors off by half a second. Right. Okay? Um, I don't care what you do. That's not the way to win races if you're a Ferrari. 
Um, yes, I am Tifosi, in case you all haven't noticed. <laughs> but um, very exciting races, though, I have to say. They've been relatively exciting, where there's been racing at the front. Yeah, I mean, like, actual, it's not just Lewis Hamilton out in the front by 20 seconds. And... I mean, you know, it's like, do you ever get tired of the same person endlessly winning over and over again? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was a little Top Gear reference there, so. <laughs> yeah. No, I did not have a problem when Michael Schumacher was winning championship after championship in a row. No, I did not have a problem when Ferrari was finishing 1-2 in almost every race. Didn't have a problem with that at all! (laughs) It's only you find out when the other teams are starting to do that, and you're like, wait a minute, can we get another team to win here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But everybody goes through their cycle and everybody gets a shot, you know? Um, I would... What I think is really going on here is that with all the new regulations and all the rules, basically they have removed Ferrari as the dominant force in Formula One. Ferrari had the very first uh, car uh, cars in the very first race and have been with Formula One since day one. And I feel that uh, Formula One and the FIA are, are just constantly doing things to make it so that Ferrari can't win. Well, the the public line is that they're trying to even the field they're trying to make it even so everybody has the same it's not about the equipment it's not about the car it's about you know handling the how the driver handles the car because if everybody has the same thing then it's the talent of the driver that's going to make the difference so then you want to then it's nascar basically yeah okay well so then riddle me this then batman if they're supposed to be evening out the field I How, didn't say I agreed with no, it. No, no, no. Uh, I just said no, that's what their excuse I, I, I'm is. I'm saying, riddle me this then, Batman. If they're saying that they're trying to even out the field, then how is it that one team and one driver seems to continually win all the time, every race, every championship for the last five years in a row? Now? Uh, I don't know. It's a but good question. But they're trying to even out the field, though. That That's a good question. Okay, yeah. They're trying to even out the field by making sure that Ferrari can't spend the money that they need to spend to win. Right. That's That's basically what they're doing. They've restricted the amount of spending the teams can do so that the lower teams can compete. Right. The last time I checked, if you didn't have the money to do something, you didn't do it. So if you don't have the money to do it, then I I don't understand why the rules are being bent to allow for those teams that are on the fringe, you know, so that so they can put more guys on the track. Right. You know what I mean? Do you realize that, like, back in the, the 90s and the two, early 2000s, that there wasn't 10 teams? How many were there? Seven. Ah. <laughs> okay. So you only had 14 guys on the track. Right. Right? What are they up to now, 11? No, it's more than that. 11 teams? 11 teams. Oh, yeah, I was thinking yeah, drivers. Yeah, they're up to 11 teams now. There's yeah. 22 drivers on the tracks yeah. now, right? And they're doing 23 races now. Back then, they were only doing 16, 17 races. Yeah. Right? So, putting more, you know, more track, more races so you can earn more money, see more races. But the quality of of the drivers and the teams are not what they were. Right. I mean, Formula One's supposed to be the pinnacle of racing, period. End of story, drop microphone. But it's not. It's becoming more and more like NASCAR. Right. Where the only thing that's different is the fact that you're engineering the aerodynamics of your car and you're engineering the engine. But you everything else has to stay, you know, up to spec. Okay. That just that's just my opinion, you know. Just my opinion. Right. What, what, what do I know, right? What do I know? <laughs> we just like to watch. I'm just a fan. I just like to watch. Um, and we're really grateful for the fact that we do get to watch Formula One this year. Um, they kicked off normal season. Now, I don't they, I don't see any fans in the stands. I haven't been paying attention. There, there haven't been any fans in the stands in any of the tracks I so far. I think there's been one or two. One or two is not the same No, as... no, no. Like, one or two races where there's been people. Like, not a lot of people. Like, it's diminished capacity. But I think... Maybe the Australian one... They haven't done Australia yet, have they? No, they moved the Australian one. I don't think there was any. I don't think there was any. Maybe there was some people in Bahrain because that was the first track. Yeah. So maybe I think there was some people there, but there wasn't any people in in Catalonia and Spain. 
this last race. Okay. Right? And there wasn't any in the race before that. Well, uh, the um, Italy one, I can't think of where it was. Imola. There yeah. was nobody there for that either. Yep. So, okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, uh, we're hoping that, uh, that, that they'll be able to get some, some fans in the stands um, as well, too. But at least they're racing and they're not, you know what I mean? At least they're right. racing. So, um, as things get progressively better, I guess... Um, and things start to come back to where um, people don't have to necessarily be shutting things down um, to s- prevent whatever. Um, so we're hoping that things get better as time goes on. Right. Yeah. So. Well, what do you think? I think we got a pretty good one in the I can, think don't you we think? we did. Yeah, I agree. We talked a lot about the Flyers and the Steelers. And- yep. Looking forward to uh, some Penn State. A lot of Penn State players were picked this year in the, in the draft. Um, at least five of them. I, yeah. Four of them. Well, one came to us. One came to the Steelers. Um, Fairmouth. Looking very yeah. forward to that. So I'm um, very excited to see that. Um, we will be back now um, doing the show more regularly. So um, thank you all for checking us out. Um, please uh, uh, let us know what you think. And we'll catch you all on the next. We also have to say a big thank you to our sponsor, CCC Resorts. Yep. Or the Canine Country Club in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Yep. Thank you very much for them and all your support. And everything that you guys do, we appreciate that. Um, we love having our doggy go there. And, and if you and don't the have outdoor chance, pool is now open. Is now open, right? Check them out on Facebook, too. Also, check them out on the web, www.cccresorts.com. You can also check us out on the web, too. Lots of new uh, additions to the, to the website, www.steelflyers.com. And you can check us out on social medias, uh, Twitters, Facebooks, um, all that. We're there just... Type in Steel Flyers, you'll find it. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks, for joining us. Appreciate your time. Just remember, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.